FEC violation uh, filed against your office? Uh, there is no violation, so there's no violation. Do you think that's a sign of you taking dark money? Oh, no. Maybe. That was brand new reaction from Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez to a potential bombshell complaint filed with the Federal Election Commission against the freshman Democrat and her chief of staff. The allegations being lodged by the Conservative National Legal and Policy Center claim the Congresswoman and her top staffer improperly funneled over nine or nearly rather nine hundred thousand dollars in campaign contributions from political action committees to private companies. Peter Ducey is live on Capitol Hill with the latest. It sounds ominous, Peter. Uh, Kennedy, the reason for the red flags here is because when all that money moved around between accounts that were controlled by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez's chief of staff, it was all just labeled for strategic consulting. And the chief himself explained all this on national TV three years ago. Our idea really is to run this single unified presidential style campaign that's going to look a lot like the Bernie Sanders campaign and use that model of, you know, a single website for fundraising, um, you know, a single like like a giant national movement of volunteers contacting millions of voters. But that might have been too broad because the law says specific payments need to be labeled specifically. So what comes next could be a big test for the freshman congresswoman who is very enthusiastic about other people's financial records, telling The New Yorker recently, I can see Trump being enormously upset that a 29-year-old Latina who is the daughter of a domestic worker is helping to build the case to get his financial records. I think that adds insult to injury to him. The Federal Elections Commission complaint was lodged by the Virginia-based National Legal and Policy Center, where an official explains, these are not minor or technical violations. We are talking about real money here. In all my years of studying FEC reports, I've never seen a more ambitious operation to circumvent reporting requirements. Representative Ocasio-Cortez has been quite vocal in condemning so-called dark money, but her own campaign went to great lengths to avoid the sunlight of disclosure. And you might have noticed in that soundbite that played during the introduction, the congresswoman was coming back at the airport, which was surprising to us because air travel is one of the things that gets phased out over time in the Green New Deal that she supports. Our crew asked her why she flew and didn't take the Amtrak train from New York down to Washington, D.C. She said because it saved a couple hours of her constituents' time. Kennedy? We all know that's not true, Peter. It's much faster taking the Acela. Peter Ducey, thank you very much for that. Uh, very good. So, Maria, we'll start with you. Yes, my Let's dear. talk a little bit about this dark money, because that's one of the new phrases in politics that uh, people who want to see authentic and ethical campaigns want to get the dark money out of politics. But this money is not looking... Yeah, so, so, we, should, light, so we should point out that the organization that filed the complaint with the FEC does have a political leaning. It is a conservative organization, so that they're very upfront about that. Absolutely. Um, the FEC will look into these allegations, and we'll see what comes from it. Mm. Uh, the question of dark money is a good one. You know, I worked on the 2012 campaign where we had conversations about super PACs, for example, and we very much wanted all of the donations for people to know them, but how you interact as, a, as an organization with super PACs, this has all changed a lot in the last 10 years years. And one of the things, just to look at 2020, Elizabeth Warren, for example, talking about she wants no dark money, she wants everything out in the open. There will be a question about this issue for all of the Democratic candidates for that exact reason, Kennedy, setting aside legal or statutory issues. There's a question about about how Democrats want to run their campaigns and whether they want their donors and donations to be public. Yes. Can I just, I just want to like clarify for the audience in case they didn't get what was happening here. So this is her, her chief of staff who himself is a financial whiz and a, and a multimillionaire. He had people, he created a pack and had people donate money into it. And then he, and that was his pack. And then he shifted the money into an LLC that he also controlled. And, and Fox has, you know, gone back and backed up these facts and looked for where these places were incorporated, et cetera. The reason why that looks suspicious is because the same rules don't govern and govern an LLC for disclosure the way they do as a PAC. Yes. Right. So then when it goes into the LLC, it becomes much less transparent you know, we're, so where did this money come from? What was the use for? Did they go over the limit for what was allowed also? with the campaign? And who I got mean, the but money? How is that not I, money laundering, though? 
Well, well the, we don't the tax know. look that an LLC gets is very different than a PAC. Right, over $200. You have to declare expenditures over $200, which is his way over. This is $885,000. It was the Congress PAC and uh, Justice Democrat PAC that went into something called a brand new Congress LLC. Mm -hmm. And the question that you might bring up is, okay, I gave $10, I gave $15, I gave it to see that she's elected and supported. I didn't give it to put it into an LLC. So how, how do people feel who donated to the campaign well, that it ends up in something that we don't know where it's heading, I, I let think, alone the, the illegality of it? Well, we don't know the legal issues of it. There's been a complaint filed by a conservative group, and it'll be looked into. This is all part of the post-Citizens United. You know, a, a lot of people, especially on the, on the right, have been pushing for taking down some of the campaign finance regulatory uh, things that had put in, have been put in place over many years. They want some of these regulations gone. So but this, this is, is just a violation of a 1971 we don't know. federal it's, election law. That, that's, I mean, the that's, that's the accusation. Yes. So, but this is the world we're living in, post Citizens United, where there's more dark money in politics. It's easier to give more dark money. It's a problem across the board. I, I, the legal issue. I, I just I just want to ask the question, you know, if you're going to go through the trouble of setting up these two entities to shift one money from one to the other and you control both. It's hard to say that that's not for suspicious or bad reason. Why wouldn't you just well, spend it out of the first one? Do you have one? evidence why of that? You, why would you I do mean, it? It's, 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 no, it's, it's limited liability. liability. You can't sue a corporation like that. Hold on evidence. For the reason evidence. that Brian gave, <laughs> well, why would you we do just it? publicly want to know why that is. Because some people gave their money under the the understanding that it was going for one thing, strategic whatever, yeah. uh, and then it may have, and that's that's why you look into it, it may have migrated or been forcefully put into another place, and you just want to ask the question for the very reason that you gave. Right. Just and, like and the House Democrats are just asking the question right. to this, get all these answers. But what happens yeah, but is when you... We all agreed you, Mueller was going to get some answers. No, I'm just saying. Let's not go back to that. Yeah, yeah, but don't not. you think when you open up and attack people on finances and by saying no planes and no cows and you caught eating meat and flying on planes and having meat on planes, there's a problem. <laughs> but we don't so know what The plane itself may have been made out of meat, Brian. We don't this know story that. is about I know her. Lady Gaga's dress was once. That's absolutely you know, right. This story this is, is more about her than it is. I mean, there's just an obsession with her. everything about her. And so, Every and so single her thing is about her. Instead of the president's finances, like, and the president isn't like that a 29-year-old daughter of a domestic worker is looking at his finances. Ah. It's like, come on, man. Her opponents make it all about her, too. Joining us with the reaction is the House Minority Leader, Congressman Kevin McCarthy, California. Congressman, good to see you. Thank you for being with us. Let's start. Well, let's start with Adam Schiff, because yes. you believe that he's met his own standard as it relates to recusal in the investigation, which apparently the Mueller investigation is not going the way he wants. Well, there's a lot of questions, and Schiff actually laid out a couple years ago that anybody that shows that a conflict of interest or um, disbelief in it has to recuse themselves. There's a couple questions for him. Schiff, when we were trying to find out who paid for this dossier, he fought. So we could not find out it was the Democratic Party that paid the Russians for the dossier. Then now we find out that Schiff met with Glenn Simpson, who's the co-founder of Fusion GPS, well, who, remember, Nellie Orr worked the wife of Orr over at the Justice Department. And at the time he met with him, the committee wanted to re-look at him based upon the testimony Glenn Simpson had given. So did Schiff talk to Simpson about that, what the committee wanted to look at? Now we find out in the Michael Cohn that Schiff talked to him, we want to know, did staff meet with him? Did he tamper with the witness? Did he try to direct the witness? How many times did he meet? Well, what did they, they talk about? did they say that they talked about what issues would come up, the topics? Is Shift has not said so. These are questions he needs to answer. The other thing that's very interesting, when Glenn Simpson came before the committee, you know what Adam Schiff did at the end? He asked Glenn Simpson to direct the committee on where they should go with the investigation. Oh. The man who created all this. Then the most outrageous thing I found in that whole Michael Cohn hearing. Remember why this whole Mueller investigation is going forward. This whole thing of collusion. It is all based upon the belief that Michael Cohn went to Prague to meet with the Russians. Michael Cohn said he did not. So the foundation for why we are even in the investigation in the first place has been thrown apart. What but, did you think, uh, yes. Congressman, what did you think of the tape I just played? Now, in that tape, Adam Schiff believed he was talking to a Russian operative who had compromising material on Donald Trump. 
It sounded to me an awful lot like on tape him colluding with the Russians to dig up dirt on Donald Trump. Maybe I heard it wrong, but that's what I heard. I'm wondering what you heard. Well, remember what else we know about Adam Schiff. Before this investigation even began, he said he had proof and evidence. Now, I'm not related to Joe McCarthy, but Adam Schiff is a modern-day Joe McCarthy, somebody who claims something and never has delivered. But the one thing he has delivered on, protecting Fusion GPS, he didn't want us to know that they, the Democrats paid for the Russians to have this false dossier. He protected Glenn and met with him when others did not know. And did he tell him that the committee was concerned okay, about his own this. testimony? They're going to use eight, up to eight House committees now, nonstop investigation. This is you know, the widest net investigation we've ever seen. This is, you're right. This is, a, this is like a modern day McCarthyism. And they're doing it to get their power back in the hopes that we can eliminate gas, oil, cows, planes, cars as we know them, and everything is going to be free and confiscate pretty much everything everybody makes. Um, I've never seen it like this before. I don't know what the right strategy is, but if this is an abuse of their power, it should be. They're doing it for a couple of different reasons. If you watched Congressman Nadler this weekend, I was on George Stephanopoulos' show with him right afterwards. He is starting to denounce the Mueller investigation. Why? Because they know there's no collusion. So they're saying, we don't have to worry about that. We need to start our own. And just throwing mud anywhere they go. But we've got to stop calling them the Democratic Party, because I've never seen it this poisonous, this toxic, and there's no other way to say it than a socialist. They want to take over your health care. They just, they just introduced you can't Medicare for All, healthcare. where you yeah. can't have private health insurance. They want to take over your homes and what you can even have in your homes or your planes by this new Green Deal. They even call themselves the Democratic Socialist Party. We need to call them for exactly what this is. And they want to hide from the fact of the success of this president. Just last week, look what the GDP said, 2.6% growth when everybody thought it was 2.2%. This president is sitting in Vietnam trying to denuclearize North Korea and never in the history of this country. It always was before that the politics ends at the water's edge. If this president or any president is overseas, you would not do to this president what they did. The dislike for this president is so great, they'll go against yeah. their own country's safety and freedom. Oh. If, if you would have given $150 billion in cash and other currencies, they probably would have praised them, just like they praised that, that Iranian deal. Uh, Mr. Minority Leader, Congressman McCarthy, thank you.